We are live now. It's on there now, I think, hopefully. Hello, happy Sunday. How's it going, everyone? Um, I know it's very last minute, uh, but we had a big milestone today that we've been kind of waiting for. So we thought we'd jump on tonight just for a little while. You literally just walked in the door. So. Yep. Nice day and get things done. So. There's nine of you guys on there. Can you guys hear us okay? Hey, Joe. How are you? Hey, Ryan's on. How's your puppy? Hey, everybody. We'll just give you guys some time to log in. Well, that does not sound fun like an ear. Joe's got an ear infection. Jeff's over from New England and Denmark. Hey, guys. Oh, and they're from Australia. <laughs> How's it going, everyone? So Ryan uh, bought one of our little puppies, Patsy. He says she's getting into everything. So we'll give you guys a couple minutes to get in. Um, you guys can drop your questions in the chat box. Jason and I'll kind of go through them. We can talk all things hay, new equipment, um, where you guys are from, what you guys do. Pretty much it's open-ended. If you've never joined one of our lives before, it's pretty much we're an open box. So hit us with it. And we'll just kind of ramble through it. Hello, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I think that's Matt. I can never I tell so. because yeah. I think Kelly has her own like little handle. She hasn't texted me, so it's probably Matt. Hey, Thomas. How are you guys? Good. I'm glad the volume is great. I always wonder how it's going to go because it says it's like one bar. So I never know how it's going to look on your end. Dennis wants to know how the weather is. It's, I don't know, close to sunny and 75, so we'll just go with that. But Very I don't windy. Think it's, I don't think it was 75 today, but it's close. Very windy. Um, All right. Robert wants to know, are you guys growing your cattle herd or are you cutting your herd down? Man, that's right off the bat. We're just kind of staying steady, like right where we're at right now. We're picking and choosing the ones we keep and sell. Obviously, the ones that have good moms and good genetics and like the lineage that we're looking for out of the, you know, the calving wise, it's going to be very hard for me to pick the calves. Also, too, it's hard to it's hard to save heifers back when um, all calves are bringing a premium. So I'm not sure that right now is a time to really build your herd. It's just kind of more we're or less just stay steady and, you know. We're thankful that we built our herd when we did because now it's kind of allowed us to, you know, continue with what we've got without, you know, feeling the need to uh, add to it. All we right. get, uh, let's see, we got an inch and a half last weekend and then a quarter inch last night. He's talking so, rain. Okay. Yeah, rain. So you, if you're going to, you got to kind of point out the questions. Yeah. With our, okay. So the next one, Joe wants to know how you like the 6S. Do you want to answer that since I haven't really got to play with it? Um, so I love the frame size a lot more better than the success. It kind of depends on, you know, your workload more than anything probably, but for what we're going to be doing with our baler and bail baron, you know, it's gonna, I feel like it's going to be a perfect match. So I think it's going to fit well. Um, let's see. I miss Robert's here in from Colorado. Blake's in from Canada. Your dad made it on. Pretty much the 6S is the same cab as the 5S, so there's not much change. We still have a Dyna 6. Um, but the, the inside whole, is the same. The whole frame size is different. The Bare. drawbar, it's like probably twice the size as the 5S. Um, yeah, it's uh, just bigger frame more than anything. Yeah. So. Um, More horsepower. So. Hey, hey, Drew made it on. He wants to know how the dynamic duo is doing. Good. Good. 
you literally just walked in the door. So uh, Matt wants to know about the bail bandit. He is really intrigued by this yeah. bail bandit. So it's bail baron, not bandit. That's the bandit's <laughs> the blue one. The baron is the red one. Um, it is Isobus. So you you can get um, your own. You can get a separate monitor for like older tractors. On our on the on the Massey Ferguson that we're going to be running it on, it's going to be Isobus, and it'll plug right into the Datatronic Five. Um, I really thought maybe it would be better to have two Datatronic Fives, but we're we're going to see how one goes. I we can split the screen, I believe. Um, I'm not sure on this though, but we'll we're going to try. We're going to try to have half the screen camera and half the screen ISO. I know I can do that like on guidance. But I'm not sure if I can do that on ISO. So it's it's going to be a learning so, curve for all of us. <laughs> we can probably figure that out this week. We've got some stuff going on with the Baylor and tractor this week. The um, Massey team's coming in to play. So yeah, get us all and, lined out. Um, so pretty excited about that. Um, see. did you have the option of CVT with the 6S? And then uh, go back to Matt's deal. Oh, I'm not sure what brand they run. I know I do know it's the Data Trunk Five. And then on the guidance side, um. I have a, I think it's an AG 482 Trimble is my guidance. So, yeah, but go, you can go from there. And, and both the 5S and the 6S have the same guidance. Yeah. So same, same, uh, same globe. setup. Yeah. Um, Matt, you wants to know about the option of CVT. Did you, did, we didn't have that option. Um, we didn't have that, but we just went with the, Dyna six, so still power shift. And that, you have, that was my uh, big thing. I I like the power shift being able to bump things right there at yeah, your you have um, you have um, let's see, one two one two three four range, and then you have A B C D E F. That's your basically your years you go through, and that gets you through one to uh, twenty eight mile per hour. All right. Next question: How many acres do you have for your cattle operation? Uh, we have a how many acres? Okay. How, um, uh, we're running um, eighty-five cows on about one hundred and ninety acres, probably. Yeah, like and that. we've got some ground surrounded too that isn't actually for hay ground, but um, or it isn't actually for pasture. But sometimes we will turn our cows out on some. But it's most likely it's it's just uh, on the 190 and 35 of that is uh, my cousins. So yep. Yep. right yeah. across the street, um, Thomas, it's nothing exciting. Cranberry juice, just straight cranberry juice today. <sighs> so what does the Baron make a cube of small bales? Yes. Okay. So the Baron's going to compact to 21 little bales and make it into a big bale, um, more it's, or less. It's going to make things a little bit easier to handle and maneuver. Essentially, it's going to be a three by four by eight, or probably a little bit shorter than eight foot, but a three by four foot bale. That's basically what's going to be in 21 bales. So you can handle them like big squares, but when you get it to your final destination, you got 21 little bales. I'm actually having to eat my words because for the first four years on YouTube, I never thought we would have a bale barren. And it's going to compress them too. So we should be able to get more hay in the barn, more bales on a truck. Um, they're going to go into a van trailer easier. So the whole idea of it is to make things make life easier. You know, whether I'm unloading hay or the hope is that Keaton will be able to do some of this unloading and take some of this pressure off, but it's also going to make life easier when you're delivering hay because you won't have to necessarily always be handling it by hand. Yeah. Um, so, okay. With that, what's the difference between the bail bin Baron and the bail bandit? Because so, there's been a couple of questions. So the bail Baron is going to put, um, strings. So it'll have, um, twine just like the just like our big square baler it's the same concept they ain't the same parts but it's the same concept as our large square baler so um it's gonna have four big square twine um around it where the bale bandit uh puts two steel bands around and uh, so the banding anything with steel just costs more and uh twine it's the bell baron is just a 
all around better machine in the end. We've talked to a lot of other hay producers over the last, what, four months, six months about this, this change. Um, not that we were, you know, we loved the Norden setup. We ran it for nine years and, you know, transitioning over to this was just making that business decision with us wanting to produce more hay and we got to do it more efficiently. It's, you know, we're going from taking 15 bales in the barn at a time to 42 or 63, depending on how we stack. So less trips in, the, in and out of the barn. We can get more bales in the barn, potentially. Um, easier to bring them back out of the barn and load them on a truck or wherever we're going. Plus, on the other end of where we're taking them, they have the option that they can unload them with a skid loader or um you know, just with spears, you don't have to have a grapple or anything like that. So, um, Matt said that the hay's come a long way. Definitely. Especially within the last really two or three years. I mean, it's, it went from not, you, you know, never seen people doing square bales, little bales at all. And it's like all of a sudden it's kind of come like had this comeback. Mm -hmm. It's been kind of weird seeing a lot of people try to do more hay. Um, let's see. Worst part of trading tractors, mounting, and getting mount monitors mounted. That is what I was doing today. No, you missed one here. Oh, so. sorry. We're still going to be running a rotary rake. Um, the rotary rake that we had, it went back, and then now we're going to be getting a, a bigger rotary rake. So it's going to be a 802 or an 882. I think it's 802. I think it's 802. Um, it's going to be a center delivery. But the rotors are going to be bigger, so we'll be able to catch more hay width-wise. And with the rotors being bigger, um, we're going to be able to tighten our windrow up so the baler can have a narrower windrow to catch it all. Because it just seemed like with the rake we had, we were, we were there was small rotors, but we were trying to catch two 13-foot swaths. And then our windrow was so wide because we were trying to – achieve that outside on catching that full swath but then our rotor was our rotor width was too wide to where it wouldn't narrow up our window and if so. you missed any little bit it showed <laughs> yeah so and we had it set perfect like we would get all the outside but our baler would be right there but it would it had to be right, right on, on the money. it there was no texting and driving it was you gotta run with the wind row. But as far as like dry down and it's just I was very, I was very so. impressed with the rotary rake, you yeah. know, coming in behind it with the baler, you know, that it seemed like the hay dried out faster, which was also a learning curve for us because it meant we had to kind of like get into the field sooner and we had to right. get the baler going sooner. And it was, it was really nice to be able to say, okay, well, we're done at nine o'clock instead right. of trying to haul in till 11 o'clock. I, I like that aspect a lot. Everything's kind of moving a little bit faster, which is the whole point. Yep. Um, so Dennis wants to know, I'm kind of jumping through here about, um, the baler for a smaller farmer who bales about 10,000 a year with a thrower ejector. That's going to be definitely you. Um, yeah. So, um, I, I think that they still do make the smaller balers like the, um, 1838 or even the 1840 is a good one. Um, but, uh. Yeah, if you're, I feel like if you're only going to do 10,000 a year, probably the 1842S isn't feasible for that. But um, it just depends if, you're, if your operation is going to grow more in the future or what. But I mean, it's, uh, there's, there's other bailers out there to do the job too. So there's definitely a fine line. But like the 1840 was definitely geared for the guy, you know, I wouldn't even say hobby farmer. It's definitely for the farmer that's only doing hay for himself, maybe, you know, um, selling it as is or like how we first started where you were selling just to some locals or you were in school and now the 1842s has given us the capacity to be a bigger heavier duty commercial style machine mm -hmm. i mean that's what heston's known for massey ferguson's right. known for is their commercial hay equipment right how many acres will you have in hay this year um so we're gonna have we actually have new hay coming in. <sighs> I would say just ballpark it. Round we're it. probably going to have around 600 acres of hay first cut one, one time cut. So, um, yeah, 
It's going to be, be a lot. It's going to be a bigger jump. Which is also why we went to the Bale Baron to just make things mm -hmm. a little bit easier at the end of the day. Um, hey, everybody. Uh, make sure you guys are thumbs up, liking things. Uh, we'll stay here as long as you guys want to chit chat or ask us different things about, you know, the hay equipment or whatever's on your all's mind. We're pretty flexible today. We like these kind of Q&A open-ended conversations i know you do I'll things are things are going to start growing it's we're i think we're supposed to have a warm seven days coming on so we've been getting some rain which has been nice yeah it's been cool though but i think it's going to be warming up now you've been doing a lot of lime and some fertilizing you want to talk about the southward cart so we've uh we've put about 600 tons of lime on so far and about two semi loads of fertilizer so and mostly on alfalfa and our oats um but lime is uh where we need it the most probably and um we're just glad to be doing that ourselves so, it was really exciting when yeah. we uh, got to do that partnership with salford um we did the airway obviously that was more just for demo work for them they needed some content so we we're like yeah sure we'll run that gave us the opportunity to run our ranch works and the airway at the same time covering. I mean, we got through almost all our fields. Yeah. It, we ran the airway and the ranch works both some side by side. So, uh, hopefully we can see a difference and, um, that was a big go was... from there. I think we've got some content and everything. So, um, yeah, and being able to run our aerator and get that lime worked in uh, deeper down in the soil to where it needs to be instead of just sitting on top, I think that's a huge advantage. So, yep. Um, does the hay season look better than last year? Um, at the present moment, I think we're about the same situation other than us being dry all winter long. I don't think we've really got the moisture we've needed, but it seemed like last year we were getting rain, rain, and then it just shut, shut off. off and it just, we didn't get any more. So, um, as long as we can, can keep getting rain, but I think that down deep it's, you know, if we, if we start getting dry, it ain't going to be long before we're in a drought again. Same so, situation. uh, that's, that's where we've. You know, we have aerated. We've tried to capture as much moisture as we can before we, you know, kind of run out. So, thanks, Robert. Um, I'm glad to be back. It feels feels a lot better. I'm still not at full capacity. Uh, we're getting there. Each day is a new day, so just one day at a time. But it feels good to be back. I do what I can. Keaton yep. has been a big blessing. He. It's really tired of mom being on vacation, but he's really stepped up in the last four months to really, I mean, he's really grown yep. into helping a lot. Um, does all alfalfa need to be replanted after a few years? I'm going to talk about alfalfa. Um, yeah. So if you have good fertility, um, that's probably the main thing is keeping alfalfa stand up is you just, you really need to pour the fertilizer. Whatever you take off, you need to put it back. So, um, you know, I, we've got one field now that's, uh, what was it, eight years, I think, right now, or seven, something like that. But we ended up running that airway aerator over that field. And the Salford guys ended up telling me that if we could do that, hopefully we can split some. So um, I'm really excited to see how that's going to turn out. Um I but left some of that. It's going to take a little time. I left sure. some of that field without being aerated so that we could maybe see mm -hmm. like there's a corner wedge of it that I did not aerate. So it'll be interesting to see how that side produces towards the other side. Right. But yes, it needs to be if if it starts getting too thin, it will have to be broke up. You can't replant alfalfa back on top of alfalfa. You've got to um go Coming with something with else for a year or two and then you can go back which but is, you just have to break that cycle which is why you've been doing corn like that's part of the reason yep. why we've been putting the corn in there in between times right um let's see 
Andrew says, good evening. I enjoy the videos. Thanks, guys. Uh, do you guys fertilize before first cutting or do a split application after first cutting for the second? What's your th thought on fertilizing P and K in the fall? Um, Did you hear all so, that? So <laughs> uh, we typically fertilize everything in the spring. Um, I know guys that do P and K in the fall. We typically just do it all at one time. but That's just the way our, I mean, that's, I think we would do more fertilizing if it wasn't like wham, bam, trying to get. Right. I mean, there, cause you used to, um, for your feed, you used to go in after several, after a cutting and try to regrowth there, but right. you can't put on fertilizer during the middle of summer if it's not going to rain. No. It's not going to help you. Middle of summer, we just don't have time. Um, it's just hard to get over everything. We're trying to, put hay up as much as we can and just go from there especially now we're going to be adding a bunch of more alfalfa acres and that's going to put um it's going to put a load on time but i think we'll be able to manage it how much tractor do you need in on an 1844s oh that's a good question we have no i'm idea. not sure <laughs> i'm not sure on 1844s i'm you'd have to look at the massy specs on that i'm sure that um it's something i can Massey, ask though. and find out about um we don't run an 1840 is that three string is that like um where it's uh the west coast bales is that yep. what like trevor yeah, bales three runs? string yep trevor bales runs one of those i think he has fin tractors on there doesn't he yeah you can, guys can go check out trevor bales bales hay he'll be able to tell you um he's another channel that we we like watching um, the cubes are great, but they like to fall apart. Sometimes we flip them on their sides and spear them from the bottom. They load pretty easy that way. Well, that's good to know. Yep. You've kind of played with that, having the big squares. Um, Sue wants to know, do you own or rent most of your ground? Hopefully rent is reasonable there. It's getting crazy here. So all but what the cows are on and this 40 acres here at the house is rented ground. Yeah, so everything else is rented, and yeah, it's um, it's just hard to, especially for us where we, you know, I got started kind of cheap with a baler and everything, so um, no ground really got no ground got handed down to us. So um, you know, trying to build our equipment lineup is hard enough, let alone you know trying to buy ground too. So you got to pick um, and choose what you want to do. So it's um, written ground is a lot easier for us. Well, and for our area, like our we're in the middle of row crop central, more or less. I mean, yep. there's not a whole lot of everybody has some cows, but we're not in like cattle country either. We're definitely in, you know, corn, soybeans, a um, little bit of wheat. But for the most part, we get the leftovers. What the big guys can't get their big planters and their combines and stuff. in. I mean, we've got some fields that are what? three acres all the and i think what is this the biggest field we have mm -hmm. is this 40 acres here well and, except for chris's and some of that on the alfalfa too depending on how much um how much our yield is we're taking off um and, you know if we start seeing that we're taking quite a few tons off our alfalfa ground i would say that you know mid-summer you know if we think we can catch a rain or something we might be able to be putting some back putting instead of back just down. just doing it once a year but um as far as grass goes we just do we just do one application on that so um robert is saying in the start of farming and haying jason has really opened up his knowledge of equipment is remarkable so thank you and kayla your teamwork is the best well thank you thank you you, you very you are very knowledgeable you just don't always like me asking yep. you to say something two or three times <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, how far away do you sell your hay to customers? Um, well, that's kind of, it just depends because you've kind of sent it all over the United States. So times. typically our hay goes anywhere from 30 miles away to 120, probably at the most or somewhere, somewhere around in there. Uh, some about 80, but nothing really real, real close local. Um, I mean some here and there, but we don't really have a barn like next to us. So. It all goes, it all gets put on my truck, most of it, and goes at least 30 miles away. But that's where you've made your kind of niche for your small squares is being able to deliver. Yeah. That, that's kind of been your, you know, um, customer service, I guess, would say. Uh, Matt wants to know about Johnson grass. Not typically, um, not 
not huge amounts of it. Um, so I do know that there has been some guys that get it in their pastures if cows eat it. You know, I forget what it that toxic. It, yeah, it will kill cows, but um, we don't really have a big issue with it in our hay fields. If we have any issues with it at all, most of the time it's in our alfalfa, but it's not not huge amounts. So, uh, Justin loves the channel, and we still have the 5S. So, since you have a 6S, will you use the 5S as a loader tractor more? So we ended up leaving the loader um, at lofts and, um, you know, with our skid loaders and everything, we figured that we really didn't need a loader. Um, I think this year we're going to try to maybe use a payloader, um, but, you know, I think eventually our end goal is probably a telehandler to for our stacking. And, Someday. Yeah. That's so, on our but. wish list is a telehandler. It's kind of like me having a side-by-side. -side. It's on our wish list. <laughs> Um, so. Bo's from Georgia How are you guys doing uh, Andrew says thanks for your insight As a younger hay producer in Ohio I've learned several things Well that's good Looking forward to the upcoming year We are too I'm excited My body is not ready But mentally I'm ready for hay season I don't think you were ever done with hay season were you? How often do you send something to work Out to be worked on I actually talked about this boys yesterday When you were working on your semi Yeah we don't send it out very often. Yep. Handy Mandy here hmm. figures it out <laughs> at yeah. some point. Kelly wants to know if she can run the rake. You think we should ask Keaton if she can come around the rake? Maybe, as long as she ain't texting and driving. So. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you hit all the wind rows, Kelly. You got to rake it a certain way. It's kind of like yeah. mowing. You got to mow it a certain way. Yep. If not, the Baylor woman might be unhappy. Me? Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget the day where you made me rake and I didn't do a very good job about it. And the next day I had to bail. It was not much fun. That was when I learned how to rake the proper way. <laughs> no. <laughs> Kelly said she knows how to do it. Oh, I know. Trust me. <laughs> oh, boy. Matt said to Kelly, mind you, they are married just like we are. They work together every day. Rakes, Kelly's raking suited me. If she can please me, she can please anybody. <laughs> there you go. So. Hey, it takes a special breed to be able to work with your spouse day in and day out. A lot of people can't do it. Mm -mm. We're very blessed that we both enjoy what we do. Because if you didn't like bailing hay... Well, I'm not sure that we would be in this position. Um, mm -hmm. Dean's watching from their cruise ship on their way to New to London, England. How cool is that? I, I guess it's for Mike. Mm -hmm. Uh, Joe is always so supportive of our channel. We appreciate him. Your feuds will be way, way easier. Hey, I can run in grain buggy. I've done it. I didn't spill too much. No. It's not something I would say I would do all the time. Kelly, you don't even have to strap the bales. That'll be your favorite part. Just drive and go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Drew wants to know about the, as far as a telehandler goes, what's your preference in size? Um, I forgot which one I had, um, that I, I've, I've been going to a guy that, um, uh, I deliver straw to and I got to run his, um, it was a, a Bobcat. Split. I want to say the number was a V519, I think. I don't, don't quote me on that, but I would, um, I would probably do one with, um, larger tires, probably, I don't know. 20 i don't know i don't know the tire size on them i was just gonna guess like a 24 inch tire maybe i don't know if that might be too big um but 19 foot reach would be good somewhere in there probably i'm envious of sandy so sandy has yeah. they have two tele i can't i don't know the model numbers on them so well enough i think they're 
maybe like a 6,000 pound machine lift or something. I don't know. Let's see. There's a JVC, JCB. They have a JCB yeah. TM220 and everybody brags I on it. I would say more of like a Agra one. Um, this is one that would probably be best. But you don't want something that's too bulky in a barn or, you know, you don't, but you don't want one that's too small either. So our biggest thing though, is that if we're not using a grapple, that's eight foot out in front of us, you know, it's all about leverage. So that's what we're wanting to get away from. Mm -hmm. So, um, how many bulls do you have? Five right now. Yeah. So, yep. At the we're, moment, we're probably a little over on bull power, but, um, Really have you too just, much than not enough. So yeah, but uh, Den yeah. Dennis wants to know: Do you think you will ever run two square balers? Um, I don't. I'm not sure on that. Um, it just kind of depends on how efficient we can go with one. Um, it just takes it just takes time to grow. So we we'll just that, we're gonna go with this yeah. year and see how see how it goes. But um, you know, it's just we can't work everything one year you know yeah so. it just takes time and bodies and you know the labor is the big thing which is partially why i'm i'm here i think we will at some time i just don't know when um but we'll just have to see how we go and and all that too relies on how much ground do are we gonna be able to keep or how many clients we can have and yeah you know it's all it's all a numbers game. You know, farming is a very big numbers game. It's not just a gambling, but you got to know your ins and outs. And that's something we've really been striving on what the last, I mean, really knuckling down the last year on it. Um, Sue's daughter likes to rake hay on an open station tractor. Yes, that's how we all started was an open station tractor, except for maybe Keaton. <clears throat> Wishing she could go slower so she could, would be out there longer. That's funny. Uh, Melissa's going, oh, Hopkins, uh, yep. we'll be cutting hay in three weeks in Tennessee. So oh my I figure we'll be cutting around for sure by May 15th. So somewhere near, be yeah, we'll be starting alfalfa anyway. Maybe we'll have our anniversary before we get in the field. Um, Drew's telling us the TL Bobcat. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, any other new equipment for this hay season? So I have a, uh, my work conditioner showing up, uh, I think Tuesday, um, it'll be a, uh, Massey 1393, mm -hmm. um, steel and steel conditioner. So we're definitely going to have some differences, um, you know, to run side by side and see how it dries versus the John Deere 946 flail we have impeller conditioner. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. Jason, Dry down. Jason has some terminology to learn because yeah. he can no longer call his mower conditioner a moco. Uh, we got in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Jason was on the naughty list at national convention or national farm show because he called the new mower okay. a moco. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm getting there. 1393. So, um, so anyways, it's, it's, um, I'm hoping in the end it's better hay quality. We can uh, keep more nutrients. It's less time the hay being on a field, more time in a bale, so or quicker in a bale. So that's something we're really trying to figure out. You know, not just not just dry down time with the rake, but with the mower and getting it from point A to point B. You lose, you know, what is it that you lose value in the hay every time, every every moment it sits out there from the time you mow it to the time you bale it. Uh, and then, uh, so then we'll have the new rake and may have another piece showing up, but uh, we'll just let y'all see that when it actually gets here. When it gets here. So you guys can try to guess it, but I'm pretty excited about it. It'll be something that we haven't shown you guys. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll leave it there. Um, uh, what is a conditioner? So you want to explain the difference in like the mower side of things. So the mower actually cuts it and then when it goes through a conditioner, it'll actually go through either flail row, flail rolls to, uh, knock a waxy off the plant 
and it allows that to have sunlight or it's going to smash stems. So then it's still exposed to expose that moisture out to for quicker dry down. So that's what condition inside of it is. Um, let's see. Are you excited to have Keaton help more with the hay? Last year was a hard transition for me because I've gotten so used to it just being us that I sometimes feel like I'm not needed as much because now Keaton's pulling, pulling slack, but it allows me to come home and do some other stuff, you know, do the mom stuff with Jalen. You know, she's getting active with her cheer competition. So it seemed like I was gone a lot. Uh, and that allows, you know, Keaton to step up and he enjoys it most days. He likes to. And that's one reason, too, why we went with the Baron is because if we're it's I'm hoping it's easier for him if we're already stacking Big squares. large squares, then the Baron is going to be putting out basically large squares as well. You're always stacking large squares. So, um, yeah, they're going to be different size, but still the same concept. So, yeah. Um, when he's That's, starting to load you know, and unload and move some squares around. Yeah. So he's he's definitely getting the feel for it as well. Um, are you once again? It was a hoot getting to meet you and talk to you guys at Louisville. And I'm located just across the river in Indiana, so it was handy. Hope to see you guys next year. Oh, that's Alan McCoy. Um, as far as we know, we will be there. We will also be at um Farm Progress Show in August. Boone, Iowa. In Boone, Iowa. We'll be both with the Massey booth, but also we will be doing a fun thing with Salford. So I'm pretty excited to be traveling a little bit more. Uh, Matt wants to know about uh, chicken litter, fertilizer, new cart. Uh, I'm not sure on that, but I believe that it would. Um, I'm not sure how um, your all's is set up. Because I think they have a Salford too, but I think I think they have a bigger box. Ours is probably only a ten foot box. I think. I know he was live. He was doing it earlier, but I missed. I mean, he wasn't in. He was so in our in ours we have a uh, twenty inch wide mesh chain. So, I think it would though. Problem is, we don't have anybody in close by that no, we would have to haul it Usually, all chicken in. litter gets trucked in, but I do know it does lime and fertilizer, and I've spread a bunch. So, we're and excited about that. It's it goes on really nice. So, the spreader width is um, eighty foot fertilizer and sixty foot lime. So it's all hydraulic driven, and then on the drag on the drag chain inside the box, then that is drove by a wheel that we that you can put down with a cylinder so you know you pull into a field you don't you don't have to get out of the tractor you just put your wheel down and turn your hydraulic fans on and and away you go wasn't that really convenient for it you was. as you were doing it all was. the fertilizing and, and the mine. lime and yeah i could go right back to where three, i left off the, the last three or four years i go. have to get in and out of the tractor and wheel it down you got your wheel exercise it. I, got, I got my exercise so the salford uh, one that we have right now is a BBI litter Liberty and they have the endurance. Yeah. Um, the deer seems balanced as you grab small squares and move across the field as you load semis. How much do you think the bales weigh? So you're not top heavy. They're probably talking about the wheeled skid loader. I'm assuming. Um, yeah. So, um, as of right now, I can handle three, three by threes with my big squares big squares on my wheel skid loader it does get a little top heavy maybe but three three by threes will be the same as two bundles three by fours it's the same height so it'll make more sense so, yeah. when we get to the field i'm sure it'll be a learning curve for all of us and we can set three three by threes up you know versus uh uh two bundles so, but it's going to basically, in the end, it's the same height. Um, and then check out our video, too, where we've been um, loading them walking floors with three three by threes high. So, I just loaded one um, yesterday of the walking floor, I think. Gotcha. So, I think that was it. I yeah. kind of got, my videos kind of got slammed back to back because I kind of 
slacked off and then we got busy and then I went with Kelly and then we did all this kind of stuff. Does your alfalfa hay go to some dairy barns? No. <laughs> no, it all goes to horses, mostly um, mares that are pulling out, you know, um, that they just don't want to cross it with any fescue grass or anything like that. So they're just feeding alfalfa straight. So all in the, mostly all in the small squares. And um, I have one other horse guy that uh, he buys in large squares, but other than that, it's uh, it's all small squares in alfalfa. We pretty much don't make a whole lot of big squares unless we kept them for ourselves, or we need to get the hay up quickly type thing, mm -hmm. or the little it was too far for the little baler to go to. Yep. So, what else do you guys want to know? Make sure you guys are giving the thumbs up. We appreciate those. Uh, we appreciate you guys. We wouldn't be here without you guys, that's for sure. We'd still be bailing hay, but I would definitely not be show showing it and showcasing it the way we are if it wasn't for you guys still sticking around and, you know, being a part of our farm, even if you guys are just in a different state watching on your phone or your TV. We appreciate you guys. Yep, for sure. Nope. What else you guys want to chat about? Don't know. Hopefully the weather stays good for a little bit, gets us some growing days. That'd be nice. So, what are your thoughts on the cattle market? Oh boy, I have no clue. Um, I I don't know. I don't know why the I don't know. It's hard. Like I'm glad we got in it when we got in it, and while it was stressful at the time, I couldn't imagine trying to get into the cow business today. Yeah, I just, you know, I feel, I feel like the cow market had a big effect on, like, corn. And if corn's up, you know, cows are up. And if corn's down, cows are down. But it just doesn't see, it just doesn't seem that way right now. So It almost feels like our economy, like, everything, everything is high. It doesn't matter if it's the cattle or, you know, equipment. It seems like <clears throat> we are, like, just at that, how much further do we have before it caps out? And I yep. don't, we don't have those answers, you know. Um, do you have much of last year's hay? I still have uh, a little bit, about 3,500 bales, probably at least. But you want to explain? Just, just over 3,500. <laughs> do you want to explain why you have that um, much? Because so I have, otherwise you we, wouldn't have it. We don't really have, like, signed contracts, but we have spoken contracts that um, – some some of our clients just don't have the room so um we typically don't sell out just because i like the consistency of having those clients every month and so it just works out really good for us we have a good relationship and i save hay for them as they need it and um we some the the, the people that we do that clients. for yeah the people we do that for are, um we've been clients with for a long time so we have a really good relationship with them so they're the ones that pay the bills is the ones that come back every year <laughs> yeah it's but it also too it's uh it'll be loads that every everything i've got right now will be loads that will get uh i'll deliver so yeah so. um will the kids help more this year yes keaton will definitely be he'll be the raker he'll yeah. probably have to help stack at the barns yeah. And then, uh, so actually we've got about 3,500 bales of hay, and then we still have about 2,200 bales of straw probably, and those haven't, those are not sold yet, so we're trying to push to really get them going. Hopefully somebody needs to seed their lawn, so we'll see. <laughs> so if you know of anybody that needs some straw, yeah. so. send them our way. <laughs> But straw's easy. Like, yeah. straw's one of those things that's, if we've got the weed around, we kind of capitalize on that. Uh, what kind of hay will be ready to cut first? Um, it'll be our alfalfa will be first. Um, so we always do alfalfa first, then we'll roll about, we usually give it what a week probably. And mm -hmm. then we roll into grass. So, yeah. but, uh, we do all our trial and errors with alfalfa. Sometimes we can get all our alfalfa in one shot and sometimes it takes two or three. I mean, it just depends on the how the rain falls and what we can get up in a week's time. You must not have any concerns about blister beetles since you run your hay through a conditioner. 
not here. Typically, it's uh, in a hotter, drier climate, uh, especially southwest is probably more prone to that. Okay. Um, but, yeah. Um, we deal with other bugs and that, like leafhopper and weevil, and but we not really ever around here. I, I have never dealt with blister beetle, so. Yeah, I was going to say. So, you yeah. um, know. Uh, don't forget the eclipse is tomorrow, so don't mm -hmm. freak out and think the world's going to end. You yeah. will survive. Yeah. <laughs> um... Matt's glad he got out of the cow business. You had three, and you only get a couple a year. You can't even talk about being in cows, Matt. Like Kelly, uh, have them again. He'll you'll need beef. She'll she'll get back in it. You watch. <laughs> Are the walking floor trucks you load company trucks or independent farmers? And how do these guys haul cross country? So um, they're com they're company trucks. Uh, there's a, I guess what you'd say. I don't know. I think. They're, they're hauling. Yeah, they're, they're hauling. Haulers. So, I don't know what the technical um, term would be. I think they had brought some, uh, they had brought a load up this way. And then they, when typically when they do, when I have guys take straw back, it's just looking for their backhaul to take to their area. So, um, they're not just specifically coming to get straw. It's more or less like a backhaul just to, for something for them to latch on and go. Um, watch the moisture because the hay will be compressed twice. Oh, are they, they're talking about in like the big square mm -hmm. or in the bundle. Yep. That's something yep. we talked about quite a bit. Yep. But the new system should help with that, right? Yeah, we're just going to, it's going to be a learning curve for us, but um, I'm sure we can accomplish it. So you have more faith just, in me than I do. We're just going to have uh, the first couple days ain't going to go. Very you know, pretty. Is, well, probably, but we'll, we're going to get her figured out. So it will be a learning curve for everyone. Yeah. So I'm sure I'm sure everything isn't going to work right. But I mean, that's where we're just going to have to play with settings and get things where we like it. I mean, it shouldn't take too long, though. It's not like we've never bailed hay before. So, so. <laughs> even though it might be my first day every year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, how are your trucks holding up? Oh, well, yours was in the shop yeah. forever. Pretty good. Um, yeah, I mean, I've done some work, but other than that, um, we had to replace the camshaft on one, but it's on just the way one. it goes. Yep. They were bought to be used, so if you don't yep. use them, they can't break down. Um, he's from Panama. Hello. Yeah. Thanks for uh, tagging along with us. We appreciate it, guys. What concerns do you ha each have as hay season is approaching? Um, I'm worried about not being able to keep up. But honestly, like, I don't have too many, like, stress points at this point other than me not being able to do my job. I hope we, it doesn't get too dry on us, but I hope that it doesn't Flood just up. set in and just rain, rain, rain. So, and that's one, that's another reason that I kind of hold hay. Um, uh, I don't like being completely out, like right at the like right at the time we're trying to cut. Because I mean, you know, we've had it before where we couldn't cut the whole month of June because it would rain. So, and I mean, if that happens, then I mean, Our I still have to, hay. I still have to have hay moving forward. So, and sometimes that can be hard to come up with if it's raining all the time. So, so so yes, we bought a bundler. And we'll be showcasing it more going probably this week. It's in the shop. You've been working on it kind of today. Just mainly putting things together. So it it's was kind of sat in the shop or in the barn for a while because we had to have a special kit made for it because of the baler. It needed it's having its own little setup that Mark Crest is having to give us. So that's part of the reason that it hasn't been overly shown because it's not set up. It's not ready yet. Thank you, Curtis. I appreciate that. We did hit 30,000 today. It was pretty exciting. It seemed like it was sitting forever and it just kind of rolled over yep. the last few days. How are the horses doing? Any shows in your future? 
Um, well, Shiloh went to get bread last week, and that was successful, as far as we know. Jalen and I are going to go pick her up tomorrow. And then um, we probably won't do too many race races shows. Yep. Just because it, it doesn't time out well. But Jalen has a friend of ours, um, has an older mare that she likes to go ride on. And if there's a day that it just pans out right that, you know, it's rained or something or we're done for the day and the races are close by there. We've got several races that are right out our back door, 30 minutes away that if it just times out, right, she'll be going to that, but she has practiced. She's cheering and tumbling too. So you kind of have to pick and choose what you want to do. Yep. Are you planting silage corn and how many acres do you, or do a blend as last year as because of the dry weather? So we put, we have oats again. Uh, hopefully they go I a little bit oats. better. Hopefully they go a little bit better this time. We get a little bit more rain, but um, so we're banking on oats to go. And um, yeah, then we'll probably plant corn again. We didn't get a good, good kill on our alfalfa just because when we went, to, when, when we did spray it, we thought we were going to get a rain and it did not rain for like two weeks. So we didn't get a good, good kill on our alfalfa so we still have a little bit of alfalfa coming up here and there I so the other day, so we there. hopefully we can get a good kill on it this year and then we'll figure out what our fall looks like and um kind of go from there um or i'm not really sure what the road looks like ahead for corn and all that but yeah we'll be definitely doing corn this um and i'll go back out this, here uh, this behind summer, the house so, so. um how was my trip to South Dakota? Um, Kelly, are you still out here? So their video dropped today uh, with me and Kelly. Tomorrow, mine will drop um, tomorrow, so you have to go watch that. Trip to South Dakota wasn't bad. It was long and short all at the same time. Um, I didn't have that much problem with it because I was just the passenger princess. <laughs> Kelly did all the driving. I was just there for moral support, but it was fun to have her here for the night and she got to see the cows and I put her to work and I made her help me feed cows. Even if yeah. she didn't like riding in my 44. Well, no raking to be done. So. No raking. She just had to be the gate girl. No. Yeah. I had to stop and think about my terminology there. Because <laughs> what sure I wanted to say she, was not appropriate. I'm sure she knows. <laughs> um. But yes, I don't know. She might have went to bed by now. It is almost nine o'clock. <laughs> but we'll stay on for a couple more minutes or well, however long you guys want to talk. Um, but we appreciate you guys and we're excited about hay season and the different things to come. Yep, it's, uh, it's definitely coming. So well, it'll be before we know it. We have exciting stuff going on this week. We have Massey friends coming in. Yep. So, oh, they're from Denmark. Thank you for tagging along. I think when this, like, finishes loading, like, after it's done being live, all the chat should, like, flow over, I think. You just kind of have to click around it. I figured that out before I got on. But. Yep. Yeah, any no, last it's, uh, comments? It's definitely good. Um gate lady yeah. <laughs> that's what it was she was my gate lady uh, yeah we're gonna go with that <laughs> no. No. Mm. thanks for tagging along we enjoy these you like doing these more just because it's an open-ended conversation it's different than sitting in the tractor and you know just talking about through the day yep it's Really, it's just been the last few weeks as well. We've been getting some ground ready, too, uh, where we're going to plant alfalfa, but um, just mainly maintenance, and really that's about it other than that. So I did a lot of paperwork moving, last week. Moving some things around in the shop and making it Tidying easier. Tidying up and just preparing. That's where, we, that's where I spend most of my days. In the shop? Yeah. Yeah. So somebody's got to be the fix it man. Yeah, I guess. It's not going to be me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. 
Don't know. All right. Well, we'll probably sign off and eat some dinner and start again tomorrow. All right. Thank you, guys. We appreciate you guys. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you. You all have a good one.